Hello and welcome to an all new Marvel cast, Explosion Eric's hub of all things Marvel. We talk about everything MCU, I'm done, from Avengers and Defenders to Francine Fry and Kindred. I'm Ashley Hubble, the Explosion Network's resident, friendly neighborhood podcast host. Join me today, Ultimate Kieran Marchant. Thwip, thwip, motherfuckers! It's your boy, Kieran, head of the Web Shooter Army, back at you again with this fantastic sequel to the superior so far Spider Man series. Also joining us, the astonishing Neil Blight. <laughs> yeah, flip. flip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so today we're talking about the Amazing Spider-Man Two: <laughs> Rise of Electro. This city worships you. You wanted to be the hero. Now you gotta pay the price. Peter Parker. There he is, boy. That's everything. Oscar has ever worked on. My father has spent more time watching you than me. Why? Isn't that the question of the day? There's something you're not telling me, Aunt May. I once told you that secrets have a cost. The truth does too. We have plans for you, Peter Parker. What is all this? The future. We literally can change the world I got so much anger no matter what you do you can't contain it it's a force of nature Freeze! like me yo sparkles you want to know how powerful I am you're about to find out. Uh, directed by Mark Webb, screenplay by Alex Kurtzman, Roberto Orsi, and Jeff Pinker. Story by Alex Kurtzman, Roberto Orsi, Jeff Pinker, and James Vanderbilt. Uh, based on Spider-Man by Stanley and Steve Ditko, starring Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone, Jamie Foxx, Dane DeHaan, Campbell Scott, and Beth Devitts, uh, Comfior, Paul Giamatti, and Sally Field. When New York is put under siege by Oscorp, it's up to Spider-Man to save the city he swore to protect, as well as his loved ones. Not a very apt description. There aren't very many good ones. Uh, but Dylan, <laughs> what did you think of The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Rise of Electro? Rise of Electro. Um, there's just a lot, isn't there? Um, <laughs> there? I feel like there's like a really good movie in here, but it's just they tried to force too much into one movie for some reason, which is really weird. It's, like, kind of good in the end because, you're like, at least they, like, <laughs> wrapped up some stuff and because this is the last one we got, you're like, all right, well, I guess, like, at least it's it seems like a better finish than we could have had. Like, the ending of this movie, I'm like, all right, you can, like, if, if, you, if you wanted to make a trilogy or, or a couple movies that focused on... Uh, Spider-Man's like younger years prior to, um, prior to going off and meeting MJ or anything like, like if that was the sort of storyline or whatever, his formative years, then the way this movie ends and where he is as a character, like it sort of like fittingly ends the two movies right. But, um, as a movie itself, it's just like, it's, it's a lot. There's like too many storylines going on. Personally, I would kick, um, I would kick, uh, Harry, Harry, yes. Yeah. So I was like, "What's this?" I'd kick Harry out of the movie completely. I'd kick the Harry storyline to the curb. I would potentially tease it. I, I may mention him. I may have him come in at the end or something to set up the third one. Um, if I was redoing this one, but um, his whole thing just is completely unnecessary. I think having Electro be the main villain was perfectly good enough. Um, I actually really like the the direction they take with Electro. I think a lot of people made fun of Jamie Fox, but I don't mind the whole really like sort of dorky characterization characterization or whatever um because then they like his villain is like interesting enough where it's literally someone who you know he doesn't have any friends and he thinks spider-man's his friend and then like he's not out for world revenge like like he doesn't really know how to control his powers like there's enough within that one villain that you could have just done a whole movie focus there um and then still continued the the storyline with gwen and peter trying to do what's best and peter's also tackling with the the visions of um, Captain Stacy in this and like how's he supposed to overcome that and do the right thing, etc. So like I feel like there's there's a really interesting good movie in here. Um, I brought also of note I will say for this on this rewatch I brought the 4K Blu-ray 
because I, I never brought it. And Did it you always, get the one like, with the Electro head? No, it's just a 4K fucking. Okay. It's just a normal. <laughs> but you know, there was like a collector's edition where nah, dude, I, you no, got Electro's that. head. Oh, no. All I know is it's for, for, ever since it came out, I remember it's often been talked about it being like sort of one of the best for one of the top 10 or whatever, top 20 4K Blu rays often on people's lists. Um, so I just want to say, yes, this does look very good um, in 4K. Well, the, the action scenes and stuff look really, really good. Special effects look really, really good. Um, definitely uh, one to own if you're into your 4K t- uh, I would say that to you, Ash, but you don't own 4K TV, so what am I saying? Uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah, it's a it's a pretty decent movie that's just overstuffed to the point that it's stupid. Um, also, yeah, I don't think they should have... If this was, like, if the trilogy or whatever, the franchise had continued, I would have, like, really regretted them actually killing Gwen in this one. That's my hot take. I don't know if that's a hot take, but that's my take. Okay. Karen, what did you think of the film? I think this is a movie that is very much strangled by Sony's ambitions. Um, I think, you know, this was the height of the MCU. This was Sony wanting um, Spider-Man to, to flesh out more and to, to grow more into a universal property in many ways. And they really are like, this movie needs to kick off the Sinister Six. We need to do the Sinister Six in this movie. And and it's just like, you just need to strip some of that away. I think the first two thirds of this movie are paced pretty well overall. I think the last third of this movie is just too much stuff going on in it. There's too many storylines, too, too much things all over the place. I'm not the biggest fan of the storyline surrounding Peter's parents in this movie. Uh, because I think it does make Peter a little bit too special in terms of, you know, he is, te- they've made it in this fr- uh, series that it is, Peter is the only person that could be Spider-Man. There's actually no other way for anybody else to be Spider-Man, whereas I think some of the charm and some of the kind of the everyman attributes of Spider-Man was the fact that it was just like, he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and he got bit by a spider and this is what's happened with it. Um... So, yeah, I don't love that that kind of side storyline. Um, I think the Harry stuff's okay, but I think maybe they didn't need to rush it to get to the Sinister Six section. Maybe if this movie had ended with him becoming the Goblin, that would have been maybe more successful and more kind of uh, fruitful for, for the next movie. Um, I I adore... Like, even more than I adore them the first movie, I adore... Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone's connection and chemistry on screen. I appreciate that this is, you know, no wonder. Like I said it last episode, I kept saying, you know, this is a proper teenager. You feel like this is actual teenagers. It is such a, a young person's thing to do for them to be in these relationships that they keep, like, one of them keeps breaking it off and then going back to it and breaking it off because of whatever reason. And having that motivation being his own guilt about, Gwen's father and the promise that he made to him um, and, and the worry that he has about that in his life I think that's really fucking cool and then and then having that storyline of Gwen has been the only thing in his life that hasn't that hasn't really left him that hasn't gone anywhere you know his parents left him Uncle Ben died it, it's it's it you know even Harry was gone at one point it, it's um, I think it ties it up and makes it really well um, I spend this watching this entire movie dreading the scene where Gwen dies, because a I think it's one of the most brutal comic book deaths in all of modern day comic book movies. I can't remember one that is of a main character of a love interest that is that gut wrenching and that visceral. That is just that sound of her head smacking off the concrete and him kind of not being able to save her, like really at all just fucking hurts and it hurts to watch um i disagree with with dylan i i'm really i think it's i think it's a good thing that not a good thing that she died but i think it's a it's a it's a good (laughs) choice for her to to die in this movie because i think a lot of people say that the best one of the things that the raimi trilogy gets right is selling the fact that spider-man being spider-man fucking sucks that nothing goes right, that you can't have a work-life balance, everything fucking sucks, there's no family life, you know, and that's the thing that Raimi Spider-Man gets kind of fairly well. And I think this movie actually does it in a way that it makes Peter 
Peter actually attempts to live a normal life. Peter never really tries to not live a normal life. He tries to to have it with Gwen. He tries to um, kind of keep things together at school. He's selling f- uh, photographs to the Daily Bugle. He's, you know, trying to be there for his friend Harry. And everything is actually working out pretty well for him. And then it all just comes comes as a bit of a gut punch to him that, you know, the person that he is fighting so hard not to lose that if he hadn't have, you know, tried to do a romantic gesture, she probably wouldn't have died. The fact that, like, you know, her death is on him kind of 100%. If only he'd webbed up both hands. Well, it's not even the web. If only he hadn't. If he had just let her go to London, yeah, leave. Go to London. Just let her go. Like if he had done that and actually stayed away from that at that point, she wouldn't have been there at that time. Or at least you know it would have been even more of her own decision to have been there. It already was her own decision, but I think the circumstances around it it, it puts so much guilt on Peter. And I think seeing that and and seeing where it puts him at the end of this movie and how it changes him. Um, I think it does a really good job of selling that. Could he um, have stopped Electro without her, though? He would have found a way. He's Spider-Man. Probably not. He, <laughs> you would hope he'd find a way, but probably not, because he needed her to, to remind him about magnetising his web shooters. Um, <laughs> well, gee, he so solved like, that problem. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. If you had her left her completely, yeah. Yeah, no. It, she it, shows him. But right, but yeah, yeah, she she magnetizes it and gets and helps him get the cop to help him and stuff. Um, but yeah, I I think, and it makes it such a complex and hard decision that it's like Spider Man has to deal with this in the third movie and deal with it going forward. And how does that his affect future him having future relationships or future friendships? Um, you know, you know I, they shot I, scenes with MJ, right? Are you like? No, I did not. They know cast that. it was um, what's the fuck from um, Shailene Woodley? Virgin. Yeah, Shailene Woodley. Oh, re- you know what? I think I do remember hearing about that now, but I did not know. It's hard to imagine how seeds. she would. Yeah, she, how she would have been the there, how she was in there, and then how was she cut out? <laughs> Clearly, not very prominent. Yeah, uh, from what I've read, I remember after this comment. This well, I remember in like Empire Magazine with interviews with her before the movie came out or something. Um, because I was really excited for this. Mm. They um they shot a fair bit with it, and uh, um they also shot a lot more with um what's a fuck um from Rogue One um uh, Felicity, the, uh, Felicity, Felicity Felicity Jones. oh the yeah listen there is a lot of people in this there's a lot yeah, of talent they in shot, this movie <laughs> they, apparently they shot a lot more with her too and like she had a full like she's actually like more or less um Harry's girlfriend. Or like that's the implication you got it with her cutscenes and stuff, but I will point out that this movie it, is two hour two and a half hours long. Yeah, so it would have been like yes, four hours. It is, <laughs> it is a long movie and I still think they do a good enough job of wrapping it all up and getting it run. I just wish they'd focus more on Jamie Foxx. I think Jamie Foxx is fucking fantastic in this movie. I wish they had spent more with him. I think it's such a different character for him to play. He's always like the 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 smooth talking confident guy that is kind of in and around these movies he's jamie fox in most of his movies yeah he's jamie fox in most of his movies and this he's just not he's completely different that first encounter with him and spider-man which is such a a normal encounter it's such a for spider-man it's a normal encounter yeah for such for spider-man sorry it is such a normal encounter for him and how that spirals and changes things and, and like you know the scene in Times Square where Peter's like kind of trying to remember who he is and he does remember bits and pieces and he's trying to talk him down and it just doesn't work out for him and I, and I fucking I really love it. I just wish there was just more of Jamie Foxx. Like I, I could take more of Jamie Foxx just monologuing about shit. Like I don't need him to be locked up in the Ravencroft Institute. I don't need him to have a whole relationship with Harry and stuff. I just need him to be him and to keep doing stuff and to keep fulfilling this plan out more of of him trying to break stuff and and have it so that you know there is more work about vitamin figure out how he's going to deal with electro and stuff like that um no i think he does a james fox does an amazing job also mentioned last week the suit from the uh, first movie not so great this one i think hits the mark like fucking bang on this is what kickstarts maybe i think without this suit i don't think tom holland suit would be as good as it is 
um, because it brings across the the big eyes and and starts adding some of that emotion and stuff in even Spider Man's normal face, uh, well Spider Man's normal kind of appearance. Mm. So um, I think overall this movie's really great. It just yeah Sony's Sony just strangles itself and makes itself worse in so many ways just because of what it, it wants to do with its ambitions. Uh, yeah, I think I agree. There's a lot to like here, but it is like. You can see, one, you can see, obviously, them wanting to push the Sinister Six as their next big thing, um, especially tying it in the end, and that's very much why they were pushing Harry throughout the entire film. I feel like his uh, his degeneration like is very fast. It's like, goes from, Considering ah, dad- this is, like, whiz kid, or whatever, disgruntled kid, to, everybody, I must live forever. <laughs> Every- Save me. <laughs> you know? Uh, it goes, like, zero to 100 real fast. You know? Um, I think this film is built around the idea that Gwen dies at the end. Especially, I feel, that's kind of how it went into it, this going this time, obviously knowing what happens, because I don't think I've seen it since I saw it in theaters. Um, so, yeah, it, it definitely felt like you could see it kind of telegraphed <laughs> to a certain degree. It's like... Uh, obviously, she gives that speech at the the graduation. You know, she's go she's moving away. They make plans to move away together. It's like that's not going to end well. <laughs> this is this is a superhero movie. No, no, no. This Peter Parker right needs to learn a life lesson. Right, when he gets given a recording of something, watch it or listen to it right then and there because you probably say it's probably a whole relevant. She's going down forward. It's probably super relevant, super important. Both movies have ended with a recording or a voiceover that has come mm. from earlier in the movie, it's like, motherfucker, just play it there and then. Even though I think they're both done very well and they're both used uh, to, to great effort and effect. Yeah. But yeah, there's lots like, obviously, Andrew Garfield and uh, Ember Stone have great chemistry. Obviously, I love the montage of Spider-Man, like, saving people, like, just going around the street. Like, even when you're super sick, you know, saving people. <laughs> uh, I got that call- Cough and cold medicine or whatever. Yeah, just thwipping a bunch of people. Um, thwipping. I think the scene- <laughs> the parents' storyline is, again, like, kind of unsatisfying, I think, more than anything else. It's like, we open with a big action sequence in an airplane. It's like 15 minutes before yeah. Spider-Man's even in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh... Uh, and then we finally find out the secrets of Roosevelt's. It was in the calculator all along. You've got this cool secret, secret base. And all he finds there is like this simple recording that all it tells him was his parents just didn't leave him for nothing. You know? It was kind of like, oh, okay. We kind of knew his parents didn't just leave him for no reason. That kind but of stuff. he didn't. That's true. I will say the the best thing to come out of that is the conversation between him and May. Beforehand, God, it sh- it craps all over the "I killed Uncle Ben" <laughs> conversation from the first one, and also the second one. The second, also the second point of that is when they next see each other, it isn't like roses and daisies and water under the bridge. It is like there is just like a growth to their relationship. It is just yeah, it's um... banger of a soundtrack. This one too. Very uh, Hans Zimmer. That, I don't think he was yeah. on the first one, right? No, I just rechecked it then. Um, Hans Zimmer. To have the to have them audio design. Not only look, it's okay, a, it's the electro going, theme that comes in with the whispering. Yeah. It's like he doesn't want to see me. Like he hates you. He doesn't like you. Look, yeah, all if that you're gonna do a character talking to himself, do it in fucking music, music and also have like. Musical cues tied to the electricity going off and like different things lighting up electricity. That shit's like that. The yeah. whole the Times Square like, f- part with the music and everything is fucking sick. It is, uh, yeah, no, it, it is all done extremely, extremely well. Yeah, let's move into building the Spider Verse. Obviously, we've got Jamie Foxx as Max Dillon, Electro, uh, first appearance, Amazing Spider Man number nine. February 1964, created by Stanley and Steve Ditko. Uh, yeah, I like you said, I like, I think it's, it it's a very interesting watch. <laughs> I know it's very polarizing 
Uh, obviously, I think mostly from like a design point of view more than anything else. It's like, why is he blue? Um, I think even his origin is like, he falls into a vat of electric eels with, <laughs> with a couple of that high was voltage. Gnarly as shit. It's like, I mean, it's visually cool, but it's like, when you think about it, it's like, it's a little on the nose, you know? Electric scary. eels. That, sh- that shot of that eel, like, biting him in the face or whatever that's going on. All like, the that eels biting him? It's like, fuck this. Like, yeah. this is, holy shit. Why didn't the guy just turn off the power bit that he asked for? Why is everybody <laughs> in this building getting a day off? That seems irresponsible. It wasn't a day off. They were just finished for the day. Well, we're going to go home. No, they sent everybody late, home because right. Harry, uh, Norman Osborn died. No, because it was late at night. I don't think so. Wasn't it that they were just finishing? I don't think so. I don't know. I just got the feeling that they people, everybody was just finishing, and then um, his boss was like, "Yeah, nah, you need to go fix the problem." I mean, I thought Stay in a place here. like that, you'd always have someone. You'd have like twenty four of- hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Especially if you're running these experiments. Yeah. And it's, things could go wrong at any point. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think there's some really cool visual effects on this. Obviously, we've got like um, like him like later on being able to transfer through like electric wires and shit. I think obviously the best shot is maybe him disappearing into that power point in uh Harry's or the the CEO's office. I think yeah, it was really I love cool. How they, I love how they shock that dude and then bring him back alive just to hold the gun to his face. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty. That's what you got to do. Give him a heart attack, then wake him back up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Dane DeHaan as Harry Osborn. Of course, Harry Osborn appeared in the Amazing Spider-Man number thirty-one, December nineteen sixty-five, created by Stanley and Steve Ditko. Uh, like I said, I feel like his descent in Abandus is like super fast. No, at least with James Franco, it came quick slowly. Well. <laughs> I think the thing is, like, his whole illness happened really fast in terms of, like, his dad... Told him. ...wasn't... Right. Like, his dad told him, and that seemed to kickstart everything. But also, at the same point, his dad was also kind of much older and showing very similar signs at that point. So it's like, are we not... Like, how is... You know, it slowed down for him. Um, yeah, you needed to introduce this plot point in this movie and then, like, get to this point in the next movie. Or even just have him, like, have the, one of the final shots of this movie being, like, just something about him doing the serum and everything, and then just hearing the goblin laugh. And that's it. Don't do any more than that. Just hear the goblin laugh. And yeah, then I think I if he had no shown up during that final fight, I think, in, yeah, that would have been interesting, easy way to set up the next film. You know? But no, he has to stick a bunch of... Spider venom into his body. Here's a question. They destroyed all the spiders, right? Mm-hmm. That's what they tell you. Where's mm-hmm. Peter getting his webs from? What do you mean, the webs? They didn't come from spiders. Yeah, they did. The spiders Not were those... making the, the rope that he was using. Not those spiders, were they? I'm pretty sure it was the same thing. He was in the room with the spiders. That was... I know. At this stage... At this stage, even though they never explain it, I just like to presume he's figured out how to make this stuff himself. It's I like a- to presume he's just reverse engineered it and figured this shit out. Or else it, or else it just seems silly that he's buying this shit consistently somehow. I, I, I'm just saying he's... that's In my head canon, he's figured out how to do it. Okay, I guess. Uh- I'm just... With the webs, I am glad... That in both of these movies, they have not gone to the bit of him running out of web cartridges. They've never had to stoop to that because, you know, in other iterations of the web cartridge shooter, it's like a very common story point of, oh no, he's run out of cartridges. It's a great point. It's a great... It's I know it's cliche, but you know, some cliches are true. <laughs> There's only so much web cartridge you can have, right? I'm not sure, to be honest. It's like, you, there's only so many bullets you can carry. Don't tell John Wick that. <laughs> he, he just finds bullets all over the place. There's not web cartridges all over the place. That's true. All right, don't, don't tell John Woo that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, next up, I have 
man, what a cameo. We've got <laughs> Paul Giamatti as the Rhino, Alexis Steinovich. Is this uh, a cameo? It's a full First appearance, <laughs> The Amazing Spider-Man, number 41, October 1966, created by Stan Lee and John Romita Sr. I mean, who would have expected Paul Giamatti as the Rhino? I did. When they announced it, and he well, was on like yeah. the front cover of a magazine as the Rhino. <laughs> so, and the first trailer they put out for the movie literally has the scene from the end of the movie in it. Like that was the opening yeah, of the trailer. <laughs> that's like that's how they market it. Yeah. I think they use him really well to show, like that opening scene shows how comfortable Peter Parker is as Spider Man now. How natural it is for him. How. He's balancing doing his home, like being at school and graduation and stuff with saving everything. And, you know, even the scene with him getting hit by that car, but Peter's just like really just riding on the front of it and lying on the front of it, just messaging Gwen back is, I think just shows a whole lot of comfort and and personality and character to Spider-Man to show where he is at this point in his life. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I hate, People doing Russian accents when they should just hire a Russian. So that's point one. Point two, I, the opening of this movie, just because of the whole sequence, was just reminding me of the Marvel Spider-Man Insomniac game with all the little mini chase down people <laughs> things. Um, and then also Did my third point is... The yeah, exactly. Um, it's almost like that game was inspired by this. I Then th- my third point is I hate the... I actually hate the rhino thing at the end of the movie. The suit? I don't like it at all. There's not, there's not a part of that I get behind. I you don't, don't like enjoy it. the bit where he like actually gets on his hands and de- hands and feet and runs like a rhino. At I don't Spider-Man? like it at all. No, I don't like it. Do you not like the? Do you just not like the suit, or like do you not like the entire? It's thing? too like they've gone for this whole. It's a military prototype that that he like that Oscorp was working on, obviously, and that's the whole idea behind it. But because of that, it just doesn't look good to me <laughs> like it's just it does they should have like stuck him weird... in a rubber suit with a horn maybe they should have yeah, maybe they should. <laughs> yes except for paul giamatti is not an imposing figure whatsoever to be in a rubber suit with a horn That's, yeah <laughs> uh i guess i'm gonna give quick shout outs obviously we had felicity jones as felicia hardy who would is the black cat um who i suspect is somebody who would have been in a spinoff, uh, they had B.J. Novak as Alistair Smith, who was a another big Spider-Man villain. Uh, they had Chris Cooper as Norman Osborn, died real quick, you know, <laughs> uh, real real quick. And then they had Michael Massey as a Man in the Shadows, or uh, the Gentleman, who's a known, uh, who's a person who puts together the Sinister Sticks. So you know, again, lots of bits. Who was seen? He was at the end. Yeah, in the. He was There's at the end person. of the first one, right? The exit. Yes. So he was also in like the bonus seat, like thing at the in the first one. Yeah. I completely yeah. forgot that in this Connors. movie they actually have Osborne. So uh, I forgot to say last week, but at the end of that, when I went to the end credit scene, I was like, "Oh, is that Osborne?" And then I got to this, I'm like, "Oh, my bad." <laughs> completely forgot. I thought I thought that when it was initially when it initially came out, when that's like after credit scene happened, I was like, "Oh, is that Norman Osborne? Is he some shadowy figure now? What's going on there?" Um. Yeah, no, it's uh, it they do a lot to try and set up a wider universe with this movie, like a lot. <laughs> yep, absolutely. All right, Stanley sighting for this week. Stanley appears at someone at Peter and Gwen's graduation, and he recognizes Peter Parker. Not one of his stronger pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Alright, that's been your Stanley sighting for this week. Dylan, what's the most marvelous moment from Amazing Spider-Man 2, Rise of Electro? Uh, I'm just going to say it's the the Times Square fight scene. Like, that whole that whole thing. Music, great shot, special effects, the character story being told, the like what's actually happening between all the characters there, between Gwen, Peter, um, and... Um, What's his real character's name? No, Electro. Whatever, Electro. Um, Max. Th- yeah, like that's all. Yeah, it's 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 the standout. Like watching that, that was a moment. I, if I was to pick a moment, I was most invested in the movie, like staring actually like full attention to the movie. It was that entire sequence. The bit that made me die with that sequence 
is just the end of it where they're like, where's Spider-Man? And the next scene it cuts to him holding the fire hose <laughs> with the fireman's hat on. Just like, I'm just like, you know what? Damn, that is that is that is so Spider-Man. I'm 100% on Listen, board. Listen, I'm this. not going to do this unless I get to wear a helmet. But specifically what he says to the other firefighters. <laughs> <laughs> Kieran, what's your most marvelous moment? Yes. Uh, a bit of an off-the-wall one. There is something that is so heartwarming and lovable about the scene with him and the kid fixing the air turbine and then how that ties back into the end of the movie. Yeah. Like, there's just... Like, something are so much more... Not to continue drawing comparisons with the Raimi trilogy that I've obviously spent much of the show disliking. There's, there is several times in that movie where... Peter Parker and Tobey Maguire interacts with kids, and it's just so awkward, <laughs> awkward and weird. Hey, and they're gonna play it again. <laughs> they're gonna play <laughs> this video of Spider Man. Wink, wink. It's me. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just it's so awkward. Yeah, this one is so natural. It's so great. His interaction with that little boy, it's just so makes you smile. And then to see that be the kid that they use at the end to try and like. You know, step up and I'm going to be Spider-Man because Spider-Man isn't around. And then having that interaction at the end, I just, I think that is so well done. There's a reason they did it in Iron Man 2. Um, it's a, it's like a good, it's a good heartwarming thing and to show what it means for Spider-Man in New York, not just for um, the characters we know, but the side characters and, and the rest of the population. Uh, yeah, well, my most marvelous moment would have been the Times Square uh, sequence, you know. Specifically, like, the thing on the steps. Like, when... Because, mm. obviously, we've Great all seen those me. steps before, like, in anything with Times Square. And, like, like him saving all those people, like, f- instant, you know? Uh, I think it was pretty well shot and choreographed. Uh, but I'm going to go with the death of Gwen Stacy. I think that's, like, that's going to be the thing that's most marvel- memorable <laughs> from this movie. Can I say, it's memorable, but, like, TikTok and fucking people editing that moment has ruined that moment slightly for me. See, this there's is why a, you don't go on TikTok. There's an edit I've seen of Gwen Stefani where it's like the the slamming, but instead of the slamming, it's the sound of her head bouncing off the concrete, and it hurts. It hurts. It is. Uh... Yeah, I, you I can imagine. Say- you know, she hits the ground and the beat drops. That's why. <laughs> It's just it's painful, um, but at the same time, it's it. I think this is like maybe the darkest moment in Spider Man, in movie Spider Man that we. Well, I would argue. Well, it's pretty close to being one of. Well, it's one of the seminal moments of Spider Man, you know, mm-hmm. of the comic book run and everything. So, um, yeah, I think, like I said, I think they built the movie around this moment. Um, okay. that's why they had Harry fight. <laughs> Uh, him in the cocktail because you know could really fight Electro in the cocktail. That doesn't make sense. And it ties into you know um, Harry earlier when he runs into Gwen, being like, "Oh, you're the person that makes that him make the right decisions and stuff like yeah, that." Yeah. So if he gets rid of it, like he'll make poor decisions, like giving him yeah. giving Harry his blood. His- yes, exactly. <laughs> I also enjoy that sequence of like Peter and Harry, like. I need Spider-Man's blood. I don't think he just goes around volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> what well, you know, the Toby read of that line would be that I, I don't, I don't really know if he goes around giving his blood away. I don't. Uh, I'm just, I just take his picture. I just, uh, I just. Uh, that's the thing. I, I appreciate. That's the one thing I appreciate Harry in this movie for him just being like, well, Spider-Man. We were working on spiders that would change people. <laughs> he, like he puts it together real biologically. Quick. It's like that's the same thing, right? Like that's clearly our work. <laughs> got flying, swinging around out there, and just, just I think, yeah, I think just how Harry puts together a lot of the logic that is just yeah, the like him throwing it in his sense. face when the dude's face when he's putting the venom in. It's like we never got to human sub trials. You idiot! You already had human trials. <laughs> It's swinging around the city. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about about Macy's Spider Man Two that you feel me pointed out? No, music's good. I said that. Looks four K looks good. Says that it's a bit of a mess. 
Um, it's good and bad. Nah, I think we got it all. Okay. Uh, do you wish there was a Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man three? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think it would have been good to have a third. I mean, yeah, uh, I think the, I think they could almost still do an Amazing Spider Man three. They could if they think- don't want to commit to having Tom Holland as part of the Sony universe. The thing is, I don't think they. I think too much time's passed now mm. for it to work. Even the stuff like you know Andrew Garfield getting back involved is it? Are they going to try and continue to tell the story that they have told, and just hope they're going to just play it off that he hasn't aged at all, or are they going to do several years later? Um, I don't know. I think it's just a bit too far gone to do it to still do it at this point. Yeah. Um. Yeah, apparently there was a lot of talks about different things. Obviously, but you know, from like the Spider Man hacks and that kind of stuff. Apparently, there was even talk of Emma Stone coming back in the fourth iteration. <laughs> could you ever, could we see Emma Stone appear as Spider Gwen? No. Was you on board she's, with that? She's way past it. Not anymore. At the time, maybe, but not anymore. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then let's wrap things up. Dylan. Spider-Man 2 or Amazing Spider-Man 2? Spider-Man 2. <laughs> I, I, I'll put, I'll explain this one slightly. I much, so Andrew Garfield, my favorite Spider-Man. If I, if I have to pick, he's, in my opinion, the best Spider-Man. The chemistry here is a lot stronger. I like James Fox villain. Music's great, looks great, all that sort of stuff. I think Spider-Man 2 is a more cohesive movie that is trying to do one villain, does it correctly, tells a story, um, is a lot more influential on modern superhero movies than this movie certainly is. Um, so, And I, I still enjoyed watching that. Like, we literally just watched it. So it's not even like rose-tinted glasses. We just watched it. I still think it was a, a, I still think it's a good movie. So I'm going to go Spider-Man 2. Alright, Kieran, Spider-Man 2 or Amazing Spider-Man 2? I think Amazing Spider-Man 2. It was just, the, the Raimi trilogy just didn't click for me now, like, what, going back and watching it. Um, you know, I think, looking back at it now, Spider-Man 2 without Alfred Molina might probably wouldn't be as good. Um, and I think that's crazy to say that without a single villain, the movie wouldn't be as good, whereas I think... You're explaining the Dark Knight out, and, like, a lot of superhero movies. I well, often rely on the villain being good. But, no, no, but, okay, sorry, sorry. But for me, for Spider-Man, that is a weird trope, considering Spider-Man should be a... The central character. ...property, a central character that also has lots of villains going on at once. You know, it's, it normally makes sense where he has multiple villains going that's on. That's what they tried in this movie. No one has ever done multiple do. villains in a movie well. Yes, no. Um... But on this occasion, I think if you were to take, say, Harry Osborn out of this movie, this movie gets better. I think Andrew Garfield does a fantastic job in this movie. I think Emma Stone does. And I think everything that happens around Spider-Man in general is very good in this movie. I think Spider-Man 2, for me, just has too many holes or just too much awkward chemistry between Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst. And just, yeah, I just, I could, I've already said my piece about that movie. Go back and listen. Uh, Yeah, for me, it's Spider-Man 2, I think, you know. It's it's a seminal superhero movie, you know, and this one is a little bit of a mess. <laughs> but, Dylan, there's a more fair uh, comparison. Amazing Spider-Man 2 or Spider-Man 3? Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man 2. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think... By far. <laughs> we, I think we can agree on that. Uh, would you go... Would you go... Say if we were to, to, to rate or list the current ones... Would it go like Spider Man Two, the two amazing Spider Mans, Spider Man One, Spider Man Three? I think so. I think this is better than Spider Man One. Ah, uh, that's hard. I don't know. I would uh, Spider Man Three is definitely at the bottom. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I think I would. I would have to probably put Amazing Spider Man just over the, the Spider Man, just. Again, I, I'm getting a little bit of like the the first movie, it didn't hold up as well. 
but I'm like, I still appreciate it for what it was. I have a little bit yep. of like push for it. Like, yeah. 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 It's interesting. All right. Uh, let us know what your rankings or what your thoughts are on uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 Rise of Electro uh, by going to explosion.com slash Twitter and let us know on Twitter or jump to a Discord explosion.com slash Discord. Uh, if you want to help us out here at all new Marvelcast, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or on Podchaser or tell people about the show. And if you like this episode, thought it's worth a dollar, head on over to a coffee page at explosion.com slash support. Uh, I guess on our next... Our next all new Marvel cast will be talking about Spider Man No Way Home. What's going to happen? Will we see the Spider Mans? Will we see the Electros and the Goblins and the. Who knows? But make sure you watch that and join us next time for another <laughs> all new Marvel cast. <laughs>